Welcome to the inaugural edition of the Plaquemines Pulse. The purpose of our show is to inspire, include, and inform you. I am Michelle Wilcox, a lifelong resident of Plaquemines Parish. I got involved in the Plaquemines Pulse because I felt, after working on so many different campaigns in the parish, that there were things that I saw that I did not particularly like, and there were things that I did see that I liked. And I felt like maybe doing this type of show to bring this information to all the residents of Plaquemines Parish it would make people more aware of exactly what was going on in our parish. And I'm Jill Barlow. I've lived in Plaquemines Parish for six years, and some of you may recognize me as a former can candidate for the council's District 4 seat. When trying to resolve issues in my neighborhood, I was dismayed by the response of my elected officials. Since then, I've taken on a more active role in my community. We are here to inform you about the happenings in our parish, anything from council meetings departmental meetings, zoning board meetings, coastal restoration meetings, school board meetings, and any other public meeting that may affect any of our lives. We will include you in each show through your emails, letters, tweets, or Facebook posts. We hope to inspire you to participate in, your, in our community and in our parish with your ideas, your concerns, and your voice for change. We're going to start now with the so watch. Each broadcast, I will offer an overview of the notable action taken by the Council during their regularly scheduled meetings. At the March 22nd meeting, the Council took final action on a variety of agenda items. Following a lengthy and at times adversarial discussion, the Council voted 6-3 to three to deny Levy Materials LLC a construction permit to excavate a clay borrow pit on Scarsdale Road in Braithwaite. The company's lack of commitment to backfill was a significant part of the debate. Residents voiced concerns about property damage during construction and decreased property values. With a vote of 7-2, to two, the council approved the purchase of 17 acres of land from the owners of Barrier Construction Company. It was noted that the purchase was necessary because the parish has gone beyond the terms of the servitude agreement with the landowners by constructing a storage shed. President Nungesser stated that the shed was paid for with a FEMA grant, which requires the parish to own the property. Councilman Turner, who voted against the measure, questioned the need for the parish to buy all 17 acres rather than just the land needed for the shed. It was stated that the property's appraised value is $121,000 with a purchase price of $130,000. The council also approved a six-month extension of Environmental Operators LLC's contract for trash disposal. Kevin Guidry of Environmental Operators spoke and notified the council that his company has not been receiving some of the trash as designated in his contract, but rather Industrial Pipe is, who is not contracted to do so. Industrial Pipe operates the controversial Oakville Landfill, which is currently in unrelated litigation with the parish. The council denied President Nungesser's request to increase the salaries of his administrative staff. President Nungesser said he was seeking the pay raises due to the fact that his staff works long hours with no additional pay and are therefore underpaid. Some council members expressed a desire to consider raises for all parish employees rather than such a small number. In another narrow vote of four to five, the council denied the administration's request to add an unclassified position of Director of Coastal Management and Flood Protection. Agenda items deferred include council, Councilman Griffin's ordinance to amend the five-year capital improvements plan for the saving the historic jail and Point Lahash Courthouse project. Considering the plan to move the council meetings back to Point Lahash in April has been postponed indefinitely, it seems there's no end in sight to the battle to get the courthouse rebuilt. Councilman Edgecombe also deferred his resolution to replace Robert Cose and Darren Angelo on the Coastal Zone Advisory Committee after council members, namely Councilwoman Cooper, questioned the qualifications of the replacements. 
It was stated that Mr. Kose is being replaced following his resignation from the PP PPSO and that Mr. Angelo has resigned. Ken Mayfield and Kenneth Fox were named as the potential replacements. Councilman Marinovich introduced two new items on the issue, including an ordinance to establish a six-month moratorium on borrow pit permits, as well as a resolution to subpoena Mike Metcalf of the Permit, Planning, and Zoning Department for information regarding permitted borrow pits. All right, on another note, the voucher program that's facing the state of Louisiana as far as uh, schools, I did speak with District 105 State Representative Chris Leopold. We touched briefly on the voucher bill because it is very complex. So what I know as of now is that it is a two-fold bill. Even though the bill pass, may pass for the whole state of Louisiana, it is going, my understanding is going to be up to the superintendent and the principal of each school to determine whether or not they're going to opt into the voucher program. If they choose not to opt into the program, then that particular school will not accept voucher students. Um, I am going to do further research on it as uh, Chris Leopold is in session now in Baton Rouge and he does plan to come in and explain in great detail what the bill entails and the reasons for his support of the bill. Um, I just wanted to touch on it briefly because everyone is saying, oh, we're going to have voucher kids and, you know, they're going to be coming from everywhere. That is not so if the principal and the superintendent of your school decides to opt out of it. So there is an option is basically what I'm telling you, even though it passes. Um, now, Clagman's Parish, as far as um, our president, John Gesser, he gave his state of the parish address on March 15th at Bayou Barrier Country Club. He spoke on quite a few issues at the Pabe Luncheon, and I'd like to start off with, first of all, he talked about the Baptiste Galette project. They are trying to deepen the Baptiste Galette uh, right away, so that passage, so that way it can speed up the flow of traffic through it. This has been a project of his that he's talked about since the first campaign, and now it is actually being reviewed in Washington, D.C. right now, and we should have the results of you know whether or not the results will be available in the next few in the few weeks to come. Uh, he also spoke about the bypass road that has uh, we've been waiting for for so long. It's past the initial design and engineering phase, and now land is being purchased in Jefferson Parish to start phase two. And the bypass road should be completed in three and a half years. Um, the coastal restoration and economic development plan. Uh, he spoke about, again, is to lower the storm surge uh, in Plaquemines Parish by 22 feet. His idea about using the berms was in the, is the, which has been said to reduce storm surge by five feet, which will also qualify us for the 100-year flood protection. According to President, money in a fund that he would like to see used partially for these kinds of projects. Personally, if we have the money in the funds, I think that it should be used for the levees to protect our people. Um, I understand that we have to go into 100-year protection. I am, I'm very well aware of that. But we have an immediate problem. And quite frankly, the levees being put off on the East Bank for all of this time, no one can tell us where the money went for that, why the, the levees weren't being built up on the East Bank. I think that if we have monies in a fund to partially fund this project of the berms, I think they should be used to protect our citizens ASAP, and then we can introduce um, bills in Washington or wherever, in Baton Rouge, so we can do this as we go along. But this is another hurricane season that's facing us, and we have not started protecting and building up our levees yet. So that's my personal um, concern with that. If we do have these monies in a fund, then I think that we should be protecting the people now and working on 100-year protection at the same time. There are many, many grants out there that are very um, easy, I don't say easy to get, but they're out there and they, if, if the grant, parish grant writer knows about them, then we need to really get on it because we could be doing this twofold. We could be building up the levees to protect our people now and working on the berms for 100-year protection as well. Yeah, it seems to make sense that we would want to protect life and property first. Absolutely. Coast. Absolutely. He also spoke about the charter change, um, which failed the last fall's elections. Um, the people voted against a charter change. And now he wants to introduce a charter change to be put on the ballot for the next election when he is no longer parish president. Um, 
what he proposes is to for each council district to put together an advisory board so that they can make decisions as business owners or whomever on the, whoever they appoint to these advisory boards to make decisions on behalf of their council district instead of letting the council members vote as we do now and take a vote across the board he wants the individual council members to fund their own advisory board so that way they, when we go to take a vote it's not just the councilman uh, votes it's actually the advisory board to put more heads together so that everybody can have you know a little bit more opinion wise which I think to have more than one opinion in a district would be fine however you know there's no language yet on how these boards would be formed you know would it be businessmen would it be regular um, people who, who are students or college students um, stay-at-home moms I mean who would these boards be you know made up of um, would it be just uh, parish employees business owners that happen to uh, have relationships with the parish president the the, the council members the office there would it, there's there's a lot of language that would have to be introduced I would feel like before we could effectively get a handle on letting someone have a voice for our district that's what we elect our councilman for um, just because he doesn't agree with the parish president or the other board members I don't think we should go rushing and, and, and appointing an advisory board that we're going to have to fund out of our district to make a decision because somebody's not happy with the way our councilman voted. And that's what this seems like it's going to. Um, well, a couple of things that, that I find is interesting with this particular item. First is to have advisory boards. You know, the, the, the charter that failed last year had a lot of provisions in it that would have weakened the council. And now to talk about having advisory boards, I see that as just another um, attempt to circumvent the council, number one. Absolutely. Number two, the thing that I find is interesting is when President Nungesser was running for re-election for his second term, the charter he was proposing strengthened the parish president's role. Authority, absolutely. And now that he's pushing a charter change that would take effect when he's no longer parish president, he is pushing for advisory boards. Correct. And in, in what I, I find that interesting. I, and find I it, question his motives. Absolutely, because what I feel like with the charter change being shot down the first time, I think that this is a, a, a second attempt to regain would you say some of his power as to what goes on in the parish to um, you know he has his own objective on how he votes and how he thinks things should be run in the parish and the reason we have our governing board of our council members is so that they can represent each district on how we feel people who take an active role as we do and, and most a lot of people are getting involved now are doing the same thing we talk to our councilmen we give our opinions so to go and hire an advisory board that our councilman is going to have to fund out of his district just so there can be uh, more of an objective vote I guess Mr. Nungesser assumes that's what that's going to bring I disagree with that I think that um, you know giving power or releasing power to an advisory board when you have when you're clearly representing your district is is an insult actually to our councilman I think that for the most part I know I'm very pleased with my councilman and we were able to easily get in touch with them and stuff like that. How would we know what the advisory board would bring with that? And that's that's my concerns. I just I question is that motive as well. And again, you know, if we're talking about the, the, the local government having to fund these advisory boards, where's that money coming from? Exactly. What's going to suffer to, to pay for that? Again, we just talked about you know, needing money to, to strengthen and build levies is this just money that's going to be taken away from those projects um, to 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 enable a handful of people to have power that they maybe don't have today oh, I so agree. that'll be interesting to see next election season if he follows through on this um, well on this I would thought I would really like to, to to see happen is that the proposed money that he that the parish spent on the charter change and making all of these amendments and language that they could get out to the parish or not or the lack of information they got out to the parish for the charter change you know why are we not focusing on taking those monies and using them to build the levees up and to protect our citizens down the road this, that is our number one crisis in this parish it always has been it's worse now
monies to do to for coastal restoration, uh, bypass roads that still haven't been started. We've heard about for years. I know that progress needs to be made. However, the first immediate critical decisions for our parish is protection, and it starts with the levees. We need to build the levees up. The East Bank has been needing that for the longest time, never done. Down the road needs to be built up from the levee protection all the way up. Um, I understand that the federal levee protection has been granted for some uh, citrus land area down the road, which happens to run behind Mr. Nungesser's property. And I know that within 90 days, they're trying to get bids out to put dirt on those levees to build them up. So if it's an urgency for the land that surrounds his home, it's an urgency for the entire parish. So, you know, that is one thing that I will be heavily researching in the next few weeks as to why we can't take those, those funds and build up the levees down the road and start where the low-lying areas really are. Um, I'm not saying that his levy is not low lying. However, it seems to me that the federal project has been funded, and within 90 days, there's a bid out for dirt to be put on his private, for privatized levy that's now been federalized. So why not use these monies for all these other situations to immediately protect our parish? And that's that's what I'm going to be researching as well. I, I just I feel like that that is very 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 important to our entire parish. So the that he discussed at the um at the Pi Bay luncheon, I thought were very interesting. A lot of these uh, issues that he talked about do come up in the council meetings, um, you know, certain areas which we're going to have later on in the show, but uh, right now those are our biggest concerns are the safety of the parish, um, obviously the kids, the school issue with the vouchers, and we've talked to Chris about that. We'll be talking to Chris more about that. And um, any other thing that, uh, you know, that is discussed as far as zoning. You know, um, we have zoning issues in the parish with uh, rural areas, uh, neighborhoods wanting to be popped up and uh, not the correct um, paperwork being done. There's a lot of talk out there about uh, different issues about, well, you know, this neighborhood is going to be put before the council and no one really knows about it. So we've looked into those issues and that actually, after I'm investigating that issue, the project was indeed shot down um, as, you know, for now, that was the Oak Grove, um, Cedar Grove project, I'm sorry. And uh, they wanted to put affordable housing, which was, I think, consisted of how many houses? Uh, I believe they went up to, I don't remember, they started, I believe, at 40, then went down into the 30s, and then I think were maybe pushing 50 when they were talking about adding additional property. Um, but certainly a minimum of 40 homes. Right. And, they, and we've had issues about this before. so. These are the types of, uh, of, of projects that we're, we're bringing to you on Plaquemines Pulse. Well, on another issue, we'll start with the heated elections that we had last fall. The House Bill 385 is what is in for discussion right now. State Representative Helena Morena has brought to the floor um, and introduced a bill stating that residents that now live outside of their home parish and hold a homestead exemption in that area, have to vote, will have to vote where they hold the homestead exemption. There was a big controversy last fall that was struck, especially in St. Bernard Parish, where there was an issue of people coming back to St. Bernard to vote when they actually held a homestead exemption someplace else since they've been displaced. Um, it actually could have ruined and overturned an election in St. Bernard, which Plaquemines, we're having the same difficulty as well here. So we have followed the bill, and as it stands right now, it is sailing through committee. However, it is open for the on the floor for debate starting on April the 2nd. According to the bill, you will have to vote where you hold the homestead exemption, and you will not be allowed to go and vote back in your hometown. So it's going to affect the elections for the river uh, parishes because of the evacuation, because of the hurricanes and being displaced since Katrina, this will have a big impact on our elections from here on out, you know, once the bill is passed through, which it looks like it will be. Um, Helena Moran has done a very good job of bringing this to light and getting it through the committee, so hopefully it'll sail through the House and get voted to put into place so that way there is no questions and no controversy when it comes to counting 
and tallying votes and voters for elections and who would win if it if you wouldn't have had the displaced people vote and you know just the whole controversy about not voting where you have hold your homestead exemption so right now that's what she's doing in the house and we're very you know we, we hope to get a clarification on that soon broadcast, I told you about the council recently denying a borrow pit permit to Levy Materials LLC and Councilman Marinovich introducing two new agenda items regarding borrow pits. The issue of borrow pits, and more specifically backfilling, has been a source of debate in parish politics for years. To quote Reverend Edwards, there's something shaky going on here. I was going to say, I was sitting there and I was wondering, all during the holiday, they had the Godfather movie on for, for like all day long. And I'm wondering, and like, as I'm in one of those Godfather hearings, because there is some shaky stuff going on here. There's a lot of stuff that's not being served. I don't know what it is, but I feel like that. We're saying that Belcher, somebody said Belcher is being called Emerald City. Well, I don't, you know, I'm saying that it should be Disney World because this is a, a, a Mickey Mouse deal going on here. This ain't Disney World. I don't know what Disney World is. So I just hope. Indeed, Mr. Edwards, it seems there was something shaky going on. What some on the council didn't know during the February 23rd March 8th and March 22nd council meetings is just how shaky and godfather-like things may really be. During our investigation into the borrow pit application of levy materials, we learned that the true owners of the property is a company called the Livaday Company of Mira, Louisiana. Our investigation further revealed that the one of the owners of the Livaday Company is Robert J. Cleese. We have confirmed that Robert J. Cleese is none other than the retired Judge Robert J. Cleese of the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeal, who sat as Judge Pro Temp of the 25th Judicial District Court in Plaquemines Parish. The Honorable Judge Cleese was assigned a petition for mandamus entitled Scarsdale's Lands, LLC, at Al, versus the Parish of Plaquemines at Al, that was filed into court on March 12, 2010. The suit, in a nutshell, challenged the constitutionality of the Parish's Borrow Pit Ordinance 18-1. On July 8, 2010, Judge Cleese ruled Plaquemines Parish's Ordinance 18-1 unconstitutional. What appears to be shaky about all of this is Judge Cleese's company, the Livaday Company, through Levy Materials as contractor, began their application paperwork as early as November the 18th, 2009. When Levy Materials filed an application with the parish and sought a coastal management statement of exempt status in order to excavate a clay borrow pit. Levy Materials application for a borrow pit under parish ordinance 18-1 was approximately one year before Judge Cleese made his ruling. That's one year before he made his ruling. The parish's borrow pit ordinance was unconstitutional which forced the parish to amend its borrow pit ordinance in December of 2010. It appears Judge Cleese's self-interest ruling has done nothing more than further complicate an already controversial issue. It seems that Mike Metcalf agrees. Working off of the current borrow pit ordinance, it is convoluted and subjective and ambiguous, hard to determine, technical. Reverend Edwards was right. There was some shaky stuff, only we didn't know just how shaky it was. Dirty deeds, indeed. We'd also like to include in part of our show is recognizing a local restaurant, a local vendor of our parish. And so we've chosen out of a hat, and we came up with our local artist who does folk art, Joni Hughes. She does folk art. Uh, paintings. She does them on cypress wood. I personally have a piece of her art right here that I absolutely love. It's the pelican painted on a piece of cypress from our land here, right here in Plaquemines Parish. And I just think that her work is very unique and it's something that I wanted to share. If you're interested in her work, you can go to www.johughes.webs 
We will put it across the screen. Again, it's Joe Hughes Folk Art Gallery, and the website is www.joehughes.webs. On our final note, we're going to have the crime corner. Jill, you want to start with the crimes that have been happening for about the last two weeks in Plaquemines Parish? Sure. March 14th, theft, 41,500 block of LA Highway 23. March 15th, theft, 300 block of Main Street, Bell Chase. March 16th, theft, 100 block of East St. Peter, Oakville. Assault with deadly weapon, Buras Firehouse. March 18th, theft, 12,400 block of LA Highway 23, Jesuit Bend. Theft, 2,900 block of English Turn. March 20th, theft, 100 block of Beta Street, Bell Chase. Theft, 200 block of Naval Orange Drive, Buras. March 21st, breaking and entering, 9,300 block, LA Highway 23, Bell Chase. Theft from vehicle, 100 block of Bazile Drive, Braithwaite. March 22nd, theft, the 26,200 block of LA Highway 23, Port Sulphur. Theft, the 29,300 block of LA Highway 23, Port Sulphur. March 23rd, theft, 100 block of Sunflower Road, Bell Chase. Theft, 200 block of Schlieff Drive, Bell Chase. Theft, 100 block of Avenue G, Bell Chase. Theft, Conoco, Bell Chase. Breaking and entering, 9300 block of LA Highway 23, Bell Chase. March 25th, theft from vehicle, 100 block of Shirley Drive, Bell Chase. Breaking and entering, General Marine Leasing, Bell Chase. March 26th, theft from vehicle, 100 block Stockfleth, Bell Chase. And March 27th, theft, 600 block Grand Bayou Way, Port Sulphur. And theft, Lee Drive, Port Sulphur. Michelle? It's a lot of theft. One of, the, one of the crimes that was featured on a local TV station was the string of car burglaries that, ha burglaries that happened in uh, Pleasant Ridge and Springwood estates. Um, it featured two um, women that actually went into the cars in the neighborhoods and, and stole credit cards and uh, personal articles from other people and was actually picked up their they were seen on the Walmart camera, picked up through a camera um, in the local Walmart stores using what they stole from these neighborhoods. So while, you know, you may not think that Bell Chase is a crime struck community, that all of Plaquemines Parish is apparently experiencing crime. And we need to make sure that you are just mindful of your surroundings. Remember to lock your doors, lock your cars when you go in for the night just so that you can deter anyone that may, you know, we get really lax in Plaquemines all over as, as uh, being such a crime-free community that we forget sometimes to lock our cars and just run into the store or doing whatever we have to do to lock our homes. But we really need to be mindful. Crime is picked up a lot, and in order to maintain our, um, our parish to be safe, I think that if everybody was a little more mindful of locking their belongings and being aware of their surroundings, it would help out a great deal. And if you have any tips whatsoever, you can get online at www.ppso.net and report them. You can do it anonymously through their tip line online. And I know they would greatly appreciate that. If you have any information on the thefts that were mentioned tonight for information, you can also log on to the same website, the ppso.net, and report them any information that you have as well and I know it will be looked into immediately. So thank you for joining us on our inaugural show.